Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today in part 2.5 of Mastering Parallel Programming series, we will be focusing on effective cancellation techniques for peeling Q queries to boost the performance. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Peeling Q, Parallel Language Integrated Query in C Sharp. If you watched my previous videos on mastering parallel programming series, you might recall this diagram. Well, today we'll go ahead one more step further and learn the effective cancellation technique for peeling Q queries in order to boost the performance. Effective cancellation technique for peeling Q queries. Let's start by understanding why cancellation is needed in peeling Q queries. There are two main reasons: efficient resource management and user experience. What is mean by efficient resource management? As we know that peeling queue allows us to run queries in parallel using multiple threads to speed up our work. However, sometimes you might want to stop a query before it finishes, especially if it's taking too long or if we don't need all the results anymore. When we talk about the user experience, so cancellation helps improve the user experience by allowing us to interrupt long running queries, preventing our application from becoming unresponsive. So basically, these are the two main important reasons why cancellation is needed in the peeling queue queries. Now, let's explore how we can perform cancellation in peeling queue queries. We'll discuss two techniques over here. Number one, cancellation in for each loop using break state. Number two, cancellation with conversion or aggregation. In the first technique, that is cancellation in for each loop using break statement, we'll use a for each loop to consume results from a peeling queue query. If a condition is met, we can simply break out of the loop to cancel the query. So let's understand with the help of examples shown over here. Here I have written i enumerable int numbers is equal to enumerable dot range 1 comma 1000. What does it mean? Basically this line creates an enumerable sequence of integers from 1 to 1000 using the enumerable dot range method and assign it to the variables named numbers over here. That's what I have written this statement. Then I have written one parallel query. What I have written over here? where query is equal to from num in numbers dot as parallel select num into 2. So this query is going to double the each number in the number sequence. Then there is a for each loop to iterate over the elements of the query sequence and the result variable represents each element in the sequence. That's what I have written for each where result in query. And then there is a if state. It is just going to verify whether results is greater than 100 or not. If it is greater than 100 then it is just going to break out the loop here itself with the help of break state. Otherwise, it is just going to pin the result into the console window. That's what this program is doing. Okay, let's see the second technique cancellation with conversion or aggregation. So, in this technique, we utilize the cancellation tokens to cancel the peeling queue queries that involve conversion or aggregation operation. By using a cancellation token, we can gracefully cancel the query when needed. So, here is how it is done. Here I have written the first statement i enumerable int numbers equal to enumerable dot range 1 comma 10,000. So this line creates an enumerable sequence of integers from 1 to 10,000 using the enumerable dot range method and assign into the variable named numbers over here. Then what I have done, I have created an instance of this cancellation token source. That's what I have written where cancellation token source is equal to new cancellation token source. And with the help of object of the cancellation token source, I am deriving the token. That's what I have written cancellation token source dot token. And then I am assigning to the variable named cancellation token over here. Then I have written one p link queries queries to filter even numbers. If you see this query, I have written where even numbers query equal to numbers dot parallel dot with cancellation cancellation token dot where n goes to n percent to equal equal to zero. So this line creates a peeling queue queries that filters even numbers from the number sequence. The as parallel method over here, right? It is used to parallelize the query enabling it to execute concurrently across multiple threads. And with the help of with cancellation method, it basically specifying that cancellation token to be used for the cancellation of the query. That's what I have written dot with cancellation and here I have passed this cancellation token, right? Where we are having this cancellation token source dot token value over here. Then where method is there, it is going to be used to filter the even number from the sequence based on the provided predicate like n goes to n percent to equal equal to zero. So that's what this parallel query is doing. Then what I am doing, I am just starting a new thread using a lambda expression as the thread's entry point. Inside the lambda expression, what I am doing, 
I am just you know making this thread to slip for 50 milliseconds before cancelling the peeling key query using the specified cancellation. And here after 50 milliseconds, I have written this statement cancellation token sort dot cancel. So this statement is basically responsible for cancelling the peeling key query using this specified cancellation token. So this example basically shows us how cancellation can be performed in peeling key queries using cancellation token. Okay, so let's switch to the Visual Studio and see all these things in action. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio and going to demonstrate the concept of cancellation peeling key queries in C Sharp. To show the demo, what I have done, I have created one console application named peeling queue cancellation demo that has program.cs file. In program.cs file, I have added necessary namespace using dot system for basic functionality using system dot threading for multi-threaded program. Then there is a class named program that has main method which is an entry point of this application. Here, first of all, I am printing a message indicating that it's a demonstration of technique 1 peeling queue cancellation demo using break state. That's what this statement is going to get printed into the console window. Then I have written this i enumerable int numbers is equal to enumerable dot range 1 comma 1000. So this basically creates an enumerable sequence of integers from 1 to 1000 using this enumerable dot range method and assign it to the variable names number over here. That's what this statement is doing. Then what I have done, I have written one peeling queue queries to double each number. Pair query is equal to from num in numbers dot as parallel select num into two. Then there is a for each loop. I trade over the elements of the query sequence. The result variable over here represents each element in the sequence. Inside the loop, there is a if statement, right? If results greater than 100. If condition is true, the break statement is executed, which immediately exit the loop. That's what. I have written break statement. If the condition in the if statement doesn't meet, then current result value is printed to the console window with the help of this state console dot write line result. So that's what this program is doing. Okay, so let me execute this program and show this output to you. Okay, so output got appeared into this console. See this output technique one peeling queue cancellation demo using break statement got printed, and the number has started printed two four six up to hundred. After hundred, it is not getting printed. Why? Because in the for loop, I have exited the loop with the help of break statement when result variable is greater than 100. That's what after 100 it is not getting printed over here, right? So that's how this peeling queue cancellation is happening with the help of break statement. Okay, so now here I'm just going to see the technique number two peeling queue cancellation demo using cancellation two, right? So for this again, there is a console application in, named peeling queue cancellation demo that has program.cs file. In program.cs file, I have added these two namespaces in system for basic functionality using system.threading for multi-threaded programming. Here, there is a class named program that has main method, which is an entry point of this application. Here, first of all, I'm just printing this statement. Technique 2, peeling queue cancellation demo using cancellation token with the help of console.writeline state. Then, what I'm doing, I'm just generating a sequence of numbers from 1 to 10,000. That's what I have written i enumerable int numbers is equal to enumerable dot range 1 comma 10,000. Then as a next statement what I am doing, I am just creating an instance of this cancellation token source class. That's what I have written where cancellation token source equal to new cancellation token source. And then what I am going to do, I am just going to derive the token with the help of this object of this cancellation token. What I have written cancellation token source dot token and I am storing this in this variable cancellation token. Okay, so then what I have done, I have written this peeling key query to filter even numbers. So I have written where even numbers query is equal to numbers dot as parallel. So this as parallel method is used to parallelize the query, enabling it to execute concurrently across multiple threads. That's what I have written dot as parallel. And I have written with cancellation method. It, this method specifies the cancellation token to be used for cancellation of the query. That's what I have just passed this in method as an argument cancellation token over that cancellation token I have derived from this cancellation token dot source dot token that I have stored into variable. So this variable I am passing as an argument into this with cancellation method. And then there is a where method. This where method is going to filter the even numbers from the sequence based on the provided predicate n goes to n percentage to equal equal to zero. Next what I am doing I am just starting a new thread to cancel the query after 50 milliseconds. That's what I have written new thread and then here I'm mentioning thread dot sleep 50. Basically, I'm just making the thread to sleep for 50 milliseconds. Then I have issued this statement cancellation token source dot cancel. 
So this estate going to cancel the PLinQ query. That's what this cancellation is happening via the new thread itself. And then what I have done, I have written this try and catch block. In try block, what I am doing, I am just executing the query and storing even numbers in array. That's what I have written int array even numbers is equal to even numbers query dot two array. I have written this statement console dot write line even numbers string dot join comma even numbers. So this statement is not going to reach the line because the query will be cancelled. That's what. When the query is going to get cancelled, it is just going to capture into the catch block. That's what this statement should get printed. So that's how this program is doing. Let me go and execute this program and show this output to you. Okay, so output got appeared into this console. Right, technique number two, p -link -u cancellation demo using cancellation. See, this query cancel got print. No other connected results got printed, right? Because the query got cancelled in between and p -link -u query was getting executed. That's what this catch block captured this cancellation exception and then it just printed this statement query can. Okay, so that brings me to end up my session. To sum up, in this video, we learned why cancellation is needed in p -link -u queries and how we can perform cancellation in p -link -u. Right. So we saw two techniques for cancelling the PLinQ queries. Number one, with a break statement in the for each loop. The other, using cancellation token where aggregation or conversions are involved in the PLinQ. I hope that makes cancellation in PLinQ queries a bit clear for you guys. Always keep in mind that it's important to manage our resource efficiently and provide a good user experience in our application. That's all for this video guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.